Have you ever wondered what Final Fantasy IX is like in Japanese? If so, you've come to the right place. In this long-running series, we take a look at the game's original Japanese script and compare it to the English translation, going over the most relevant and interesting differences. And this episode covers a major one concerning the character of Beatrix. Now, as I said in the very first episode of this series, when I present these changes in dialogue that inevitably occur during the process of translation, it's best to keep in mind that there is a difference between the change itself and my opinion on the change. The change is what it is, and I'm just pointing out that it's there, but my opinion on the change is my own, and you don't necessarily have to agree with it. All I hope is that you find my exploration and examination of these changes to be informative and entertaining. I mention this now because in this particular episode I'll probably be injecting my personal thoughts on the dialogue changes a little more than usual, since I really think that the official translation managed to make the character of Beatrix less sympathetic and, frankly, a worse person in the English version of Final Fantasy IX. So if you're curious to find out how and why, then stick around. After being trounced by Beatrix in Bermessia, Zidane and company head towards Clara, where they're trounced by Beatrix once again, just before the city itself is blown to bits by Queen Bran, thanks to the power of the Eidolans that she stole from Garnet. Our heroes, however, manage to escape, by sneaking into the Queen's airship, the Red Rose, where they overhear Beatrix talking to herself in reaction to Odin's utter destruction of Clara and its people. In English she says, That was ridiculous. My troops alone would have been more than enough to take Clara. Why does the Queen insist on using black mages and idolans? I didn't train all these years so that I could take a backseat to anyone. Whoa! So your problem with the Queen essentially launching a nuke to pulverize an entire city and all of its people is that you had to take a backseat to some of our other troops and servants? Let me get this straight, you're upset that you weren't more involved in a campaign of genocide and that you didn't get all the glory for it? Jesus Christ, Beatrix. I mean, I don't know about you, but that was my reaction to those lines from her. I found them a bit disturbing, and they always made it a little difficult for me to buy her switching sides and being treated as one of the good guys just a couple of scenes later. So imagine my surprise when I find out that this impression of mine was largely created by the English translation of those lines, since in Japanese, Beatrix's reaction to the destruction of Clara is significantly different and doesn't make her look anywhere near as bad in my opinion. So to honor the radical nature of the discrepancy between the two versions, let's look very carefully at a more faithful translation of the Japanese lines and compare it to the official English script. In the first line, Beatrix says, Doyukotoda. What is the meaning of this? So right away she's expressing shock more than annoyance. But the second line is where the English translation really starts to depart from the original script. What need was there for Queen Bran to annihilate the entire city of Clara? As you can see, in Japanese, she actually comes off as being somewhat put off, if not altogether horrified, by the lengths to which the Queen has gone, and specifically questions what need was there to do something so extreme. So she's actually showing us a semblance of a conscience here, and that there are still some lines she won't cross. But in English the emphasis is on her being upset that the Queen didn't entrust this genocidal campaign to her and her troops alone, which again, I find a bit disturbing. Now you might argue that she's suggesting that her troops would have just conquered the city rather than destroy it and everyone in it, but let's not forget that 1. She had already routed and killed a lot of people in Bermessia, and 2. She never really displayed any moral qualms or any hesitation whatsoever really while committing such atrocities. On the contrary, she acted proudly and smugly about it, looking down on her innocent victims for being weak. So I have a hard time buying the idea that she just wanted to have her troops settle things peacefully with minimal casualties in Clara. But at least in Japanese her reaction to the utter annihilation of the city is clearly one of shock and possibly horror at the lengths to which the Queen has gone, whereas in English she mostly just expresses dissatisfaction with the fact that she and her troops were overshadowed and didn't play a big enough part in the campaign. 
And in my view, this change paints the following line in a different light than the Japanese version, even though the lines say the same thing. Why does she feel the need to use the likes of black mages and idolans? Since in Japanese she specifically mentioned the annihilation of the entire city of Clara, her subsequent questioning of the use of idolans and black mages is clearly meant to reflect her disapproval of such extreme measures since the idolans and black mages can only enact ruthless and unmitigated destruction. But in English she didn't mention that and, worst of all, in the last line of this speech, which in my opinion is the most egregious translation choice in the entire game, Beatrix goes on to make it even clearer that her issue is that the spotlight is being taken away from her. However, in Japanese all she says is I didn't polish my skills for something like this. That's right, in Japanese there is no mention of this taking a backseat nonsense at all. She simply says that she didn't train or polish her skills for something like this, that is, to enact the utter annihilation of a city and the genocide of its people. In no way is her discontentment about playing second fiddle, or to use her words in the English translation, taking a backseat to idolans or black mages. She's bothered that the queen is using such tools of warfare because they can only bring about the atrocity that she's just witnessed. And in Japanese it's clear that Beatrix doesn't approve of going that far. But in English the translator makes it sound like her main problem is that the Eidolans and the Black Mages are threatening her prominence in the military and getting all the credit and plaudits for Alexandria's victories. And this reflects extremely poorly on her in my opinion. Which is why I much prefer the Japanese monologue. Of course, that's not to say that she's a saint in Japanese. She still participated in those campaigns after all, but the striking difference in nuance in this speech does make her look like a more cold-blooded person in English, with a weaker moral compass, which in turn makes the following scenes where she switches sides and is promptly treated like one of the good guys a little jarring and difficult to swallow. To me anyway. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Although we're still not done since, even in the scene where Beatrix switches sides, I feel the English translation of her lines there could also have been better. But we'll get there, let's finish this scene first. In English, upon seeing the black mages pass by, Beatrix murmurs to herself, There's no difference between them and me. We're all just blindly following orders. My heart and my will mean nothing. Maybe Steiner was right. When you think about it, that last line about Steiner being right doesn't make that much sense. I mean, Steiner and Beatrix never talked about these things, not that we saw at least, and either way, Steiner was still a total brand stan when he and Beatrix last met, so there's no way he would have warned her about the queen's erratic behavior or something like that. In Japanese, what she says is is this all I can do? Continue to serve like those things that don't even have a heart or a mind of their own? If this is to be the way of things, then I would much rather have vanished like Steiner. So what she's actually saying is that, after seeing what Bran is truly capable of, she wishes she wasn't around anymore, like Steiner, who's been missing in action for a while now. Now, of course, in both the English and Japanese versions, what ultimately makes Beatrix openly defy Bran is seeing what she does to Princess Garnet. But in Japanese, the Queen's treatment of her daughter is essentially the straw that breaks the camel's back for Beatrix after she had already shown to be appalled by what the Queen had done to Clara. Whereas in English, this is basically the first time we see her morally object to something. And we just saw her being essentially okay with the genocide of an entire people, so again, for me personally it's a little jarring to see her suddenly grow a conscience upon seeing Garnet suffer at the hands of her mother. Of course, I know this is the person that she's sworn to serve, but just a few minutes ago she was complaining about the fact that she had to take a backseat during a genocidal campaign, so you can't really expect the fact that she cares about the way her princess is treated to be enough to fundamentally change my view of the character and accept her as one of the good guys. 
Whereas in Japanese, she was rather appalled by said genocide, so we already knew there was some semblance of a conscience there, and thus, her switching sides upon seeing Garnet's plight, feels more like a natural evolution of that side of hers, rather than a very sudden and abrupt 180 change in character. Not only that, but in Japanese, the lines that she speaks while switching sides also paint her in a somewhat more favorable light, in my opinion. Let me show and explain how. Upon seeing the collapsed Garnet, Beatrix finally realizes and fully accepts the truth and says in English, My heart is set. All this time I have been mistaken. It's nice that she acknowledges this, but I think the Japanese line does more for her character overall. My long-standing doubts have been dispelled. I really was mistaken this whole time. See the difference? In Japanese, she actually reveals that she's had doubts about Bran's behavior for a while now, which is also nice to know. Of course, it would have been even better if we had seen some of those doubts before, rather than her smugly looking down on all who opposed her, but still, it's good to know that inwardly she had been questioning things for a while, as it lends more credence to her actions and decisions in this scene. She then thinks back to what she did to Bermessia and its people and says the following in English. Citizens of Bermessia, please forgive me. This is better than nothing, but yet again, I vastly prefer the Japanese line, which is... Bermessia no tami wo watashi wa yurusare nai ayamachi wo okashite shimatte itta yoo desu. Citizens of Bermessia, it seems I have committed an unforgivable crime. I much prefer to see her explicitly acknowledge the severity of her sins over her simply asking for forgiveness right away. Hell, in a way, the English translation is almost the opposite of what she says in Japanese, where she specifically calls her own actions yurusarenai, meaning unforgivable. Yet in English they have her straight up ask for forgiveness, as if what she had done was something that could be forgiven just like that. So yeah, in Japanese, Beatrix simply comes off as more aware of the blood on her hands and the severity of her crimes, and verbally acknowledges this in a more explicit fashion than in English. These differences, coupled with the ones that we saw earlier in the scene on the Red Rose, are why I think her character was done a disservice in the English version due to a rare sequence of somewhat sloppy translations. But the good news is, now that you're aware that that's not how she was written in the original script, you can make the mental corrections yourself while going through these scenes in English. If you'd like, of course. If you prefer the English version's take on her character and lines, then that's fine too. Like I said before, these are just my views and you may not agree with them, and that's totally okay. Anyway, Beatrix and Freya make a truce to hold off Bran's forces, while the rest of the party tries to escape and take the princess to safety. But suddenly, Steiner stops and decides to go help them, entrusting Garnet to Zidane. This is more or less the climax of Rusty's character arc, and in Japanese, it naturally comes with an appropriate change in speech as well. Up until now, he had always addressed Zidane with the extremely hostile second-person pronoun of Kisama. But here, he addresses him, for the first time, with the more polite Onushi thus reflecting the fact that he now respects him and acknowledges his desire to protect the princess as being genuine and trustworthy. In English, Zidane's reply to Steiner's request to escape with the princess and take her to safety is Piece of cake, I'm an escape artist. Now, this is easily in the top 5 wittiest and funniest Zidane lines, but since it's tied to a very specific English expression, I already expected it to be something that was added in the translation, and wasn't surprised when the Japanese line proved to be fairly different. And it's definitely not as clever or as funny as the English line, but it still has its charm. If we translate it literally, the line will probably sound a little unnatural and corny, but let's do it anyway. Gotcha, I'll take on that spirit. Of course, by spirit he means Steiner's chivalrous spirit and desire to protect others, especially the princess. And so, just like Steiner finally shows respect for Zidane, Zidane is also now showing respect for Old Rusty. There's also another fun detail here. When Vivi says he'll help as well, Steiner replies with the following in English. Zidane, Master Vivi, I'm counting on you. 
While in Japanese, Steiner replies with Jitan dono, bibi dono, tayori ni shiteru zo. Notice how he uses the honorific dono not just for Vivi, which he's always done, but for Zidane as well. Again, showing through changes in his speech that the way he sees Zidane has also changed. Not that I'm criticizing the English translation for not doing this, since this kind of stuff is very particular to the Japanese language and it wouldn't necessarily sound very right or natural to have Steiner suddenly address Zidane with the word master here. I'm just pointing out the difference is all, which is the whole point of this series. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed all the Beatrix and Steiner stuff in this episode, because we won't be seeing them or Freya again for a while, since Final Fantasy IX goes back to basics from this point on, and the party is reduced to just Zidane, Vivi and Garnet. For now. But we'll soon visit a brand new continent, where we'll meet our final party members and enjoy some of the best scenes in the whole game. So if you're interested in that, then subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss future episodes. And if you enjoyed this one, then please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time, Chocobros.